Today we're going to be talking about fungal overgrowth in the body and why they are such a problem, why they cause so many symptoms and they make people so unwell. And I think they are massively under-recognized. I think there's some new kids on the block, things like SIBO, but we can see, you know, that CIFO dialogue come back in as more of a, um, you know, notable discussion, which I am happy to see because I treat a lot of SIBO. I think SIBO is definitely a major driver of a lot of bloating and gas and, you know, abdominal cramping, digestive, leaky gut, change in bowel movements. But I do see fungal overgrowth, candida, aspergillus actually growing, green mold growing in the body, in the digestive tract. Sometimes geotrichum, rarely rhodotrola, but fungal overgrowth globally being a major driver of chronic health issues. Sometimes they're pretty significant. These patients can be massively, massively unwell, and they can have been unwell for a long time, and they can also be either treatment resistant or very reactive. So we're gonna be talking about the whys, you know, some of the mechanism of actions, the uh, metabolites that these fungal overgrowths produce in the body, um, you know, how it impacts our uh, physiology, pathophysiology, how it creates issues, <laughs> and what the common symptoms are for each of these uh, issues that I commonly see. So before we jump in, let's just talk about the common symptoms where I say, oh, look, maybe that's fungal. If we're just focusing on the gut, there would be things like bloating, distension, gassiness, abdominal pain, change in bowel movements. So whether you've got loose, chronic, watery diarrhea, whether you've got constipation, whether it's a mixed bag, it's kind of, you know, one from each column, you know, three times a day. Um, you know, uh, burping could be a really big one. We talked about flatulence. Those are really common digestive symptoms. They tend to worsen with refined carbs, simple sugars, fruits. Those are really big pieces. And then when we're thinking more systemically, there are symptoms that people don't relate to a fungal overgrowth and a really big one where I say, oh, look, if you get digestive issues and this is kind of running hot and heavy, you, we might consider fungal and we might test for it. And they would be things like uh, histamine intolerance and that allergy axis, stuffed nose, headaches, sore lymph nodes, um, you know, cardiovascular complications, so tachycardia or arrhythmias, palpitations, skin involvement is huge. I see a ton of dermatitis, a ton of eczema, sometimes hives associated with fungal overgrowth. And then cognitive dysfunction is massive. Brain fog, not being able to think clearly, not being on task, low motivation, that's more nervous system involvement and um, you know some of your neurotransmitters. And then the other really big one is body pain. And you might say, how is there a connection between a fungal overgrowth like candida and my joint pain? We're gonna talk about that today. So leading straight into it, a major consequence of fungal overgrowth in the body could be, not always, but commonly is oxalates. And oxalates are these little kind of crystalline microscopic structures. You can find them in plants. So, you know, the kind of toxic plant kind of concept. There's a few books out there. Sally Norton's done one, Toxic Superfoods. You find it in things like spinach and sweet potatoes and almonds. I don't have a huge concern around oxalates in the diet when it's in moderation and when people can handle it, right? And then when we have something adding more oxalates to that load, like a fungal overgrowth, fat malabsorption or microbiome um, you know, disruptions can add to it too, but the fungal overgrowth and the mold exposure piece is just like fuel on the fire for your oxalate load. And you might ask yourself, how's that possible? You find oxalates in uh, plants. How, how do fungal overgrowth produce oxalates? It's actually a pretty common pathway that fungal overgrowth can work this pathway called glycoxalate. It's the glycoxalate pathway. And it's kind of part of their Krebs cycle where they can convert this intermediary in the Krebs cycle 
into glycoxalate, which then gets converted into oxalates. So when I'm looking at testing, and my favorite one here is an organic acids test, if I see a fungal overgrowth that's quite high, and that's on the first page, I can almost guess, um, mostly accurate, but not always, that's why we test, and I would guess that their oxalate levels are quite elevated as well. And when you see them double the 95th percentile, sometimes triple the 95th percentile, that is a very, very significant reason for body pain, joint pain, UTI-like pain without an infection. You keep screening and there's no bug, I'd be suspecting oxalates because they're passing through your urinary tract. Sometimes vulvodynia, that's a really, really big symptom of oxalates, specifically if there's no infection, um, UTI, no UTI. And then the other really big ones would be the consequences of that, you know, the muscle pain, the joint pain, fatigue's big, malaise is really big, exercise intolerance is absolutely huge. When it's really bad, and I see this a few times a year, not commonly, you'll get the oxalates actually excreting through skin. And so you can see these wounds that don't heal. And you can also feel this little kind of grit that's coming through the, uh, the wounds. It's a bit of like an oxalate purging symptom. Believe me, yeah, it's crazy. You know, I didn't believe it when I first read about this, but I've actually seen this and then tested and found their oxalates were through the roof. And then when we put them on an oxalate um, supporting protocol, detox protocol, all that heals up, right? And then we retest and their oxalates are resolved. So, you know, the proof's in the pudding there. So the second possible byproduct of a fungal overgrowth, something like candida, would be acetaldehyde. And this is a very, very toxic, toxic product. Again, that can be produced by fungal overgrowth. It is extremely toxic, it's mutagenic, and it's carcinogenic. And that carcinogenic cancer-causing property has been pretty well established. Now here for me, we're talking about this nexus point and candida can play a really strong role here and fungal overgrowth in general can be, play a really strong role here. And it's the nexus point between alcohol metabolism, fungal overgrowth, which we're talking about, and the last big one would be histamine intolerance. And they all share parts of this pathway where these things kind of get degraded. And so if you've got strong alcohol intolerance, if you cannot tolerate alcohol, you're that person at the party who's hung over <laughs> before anyone's drunk. You've got headaches, even if you have symptoms of a hangover without having consumed alcohol, headaches, slurred words, cognitive dysfunction, brain fog, memory loss, some kind of central nervous system toxicity piece, neurodegeneration, uh, and there is evidence of a fungal overgrowth in the body, I would be pinpointing that acetaldehyde piece and I would be treating the fungal overgrowth to help resolve that toxic byproduct. So we could talk about acetaldehyde toxicity you know, for hours, I won't bore you, but the really big piece here is that it damages DNA synthesis and repair and it also inhibits methylation. So those are both really important pieces. If you are not methylating properly, you're not gonna be feeling very well. That's why a lot of people get hooked on SAMI as a supplement because when they take it and they've been poor methylators, they feel like a million bucks. Um, but that to me would confirm that methylation needs support and we'd wanna be getting you off of something like SAMI down the track. And so big symptoms of acetaldehyde toxicity or overload would be severe reactions to alcohol. You're the type of person or the patient that I see every week in the clinic that's just like, I just had to stop drinking because I cannot tolerate it. I do not feel good when I drink. And then the other really big ones would be central nervous system dysfunction, headaches, cognitive dysfunction, brain fog, slurred words, signs of inflammation, oxidative stress gets ramped right up 
And so then you start to burn through a lot of these antioxidants in the body, things like glutathione, and then the wheels can really come off. So you can see how fungal overgrowth can put such a load on your system that you start to de deplete a lot of these really precious resources that help keep you well. Third possible byproduct of fungal overgrowth in your body would be mycotoxins. Now, this is hit or miss. Depends on the study you read, depends on the fungal overgrowth you have in your body. If you've got aspergillus growing in your body, and you can test for that on the Mosaic Labs organic acids test, they have a few really novel and unusual markers for green mold colonizing the body, then it would be assumed that you have an inbuilt mycotoxin production factory in your body and the consequences can be severe. People generally are very, very, very unwell when they've been either exposed to mold in the environment or they have green mold growing in their body. A lot of that can be mediated through mycotoxins. And then if you look at something like candida, you know, it's a mixed bag. It depends on what study you read. There's some studies that say, absolutely not. They do not produce mycotoxins. We've looked at, you know, 12 different strains, haven't found them. And then other studies that have actually found that candida can produce mycotoxins and gliotoxin would be the big one there. And so when we want to think about mycotoxins, and symptoms, remember it travels through your lymphatics, it, tr it travels through your bile, and then it travels through your bowel movements to eliminate. You can see a lot of allergic symptoms, so very high histamine, allergic, reactive, poor tolerance symptoms. I'm reacting to everything in my environment, nothing safe, that's a common mold kind of presentation. <laughs> a lot of joint pain, again, because that's the oxalate piece. Um, and then the mycotoxin piece, you can have sore lymph nodes, things can be very sluggish, you can wind up with these kind of consequences of poor kind of lymph flow. And then the last really big piece there is constipation. I see that in most of my mycotoxin replete patients, people with mycotoxin kind of load, they're having a lot of trouble eliminating the mycotoxins in their bowel movements. So the last fungal metabolite that I wanted to talk about today is called ammonia. And the big thing to remember here is that this just doesn't have to be from fungal overgrowth. So if you see ammonia on your out test, you don't always assume that it's a fungal overgrowth like with most of these they can be um, you know coming from different you know areas and different problems you know inbuilt genetic issues and you know different bugs and you know um, you know metabolism issues as well can all produce a buildup of ammonia um, but it's definitely a consequence of fungal overgrowth not something that I see very frequently, but when I do see it, I really pay attention. And the big thing to remember about ammonia is that it is a potent, potent neurotoxin and it causes quite severe negative effects on the central nervous system. That's the headline with ammonia. And a really big insight here is that excessive ammonia has been found in certain kind of neurological dysfunctions and disorders. You know, things like Alzheimer's disease can be traced back in part, in some cases, right? It's not all of them because it's a mixed bag, it's multifactorial, but ammonia can definitely drive that central nervous system toxicity through that neurotoxin uh, aspect. And so a lot of what we know about ammonia comes from these in Built genetic disorders where children can actually process ammonia and detoxify ammonia and so those are quite severe cases and uh, often they'll wind up with permanent damage to their central nervous system now obviously if we're talking about fungal overgrowth where if someone's been kind of chronically unwell and they're trying to get to the bottom of it those you know that presentation will be more muted it won't be as, as severe as that kind of inborn genetic dysfunction 
function. But a big piece here is that ammonia can go kind of systemic. It can diffuse across and it can be transported across all of your plasma membranes in the body. And that means that it can damage so much more than just your central nervous system. And so here I would be looking again as a theme, <laughs> symptoms, cognitive dysfunction, so headaches, brain fog, poor concentration, slurred words, migraines would be another big one here. The liver function can definitely be impaired here and your blood brain barrier can become more permeable. Um, so you don't have those kind of shields up, you don't have that defense up. Um, the other really big one is immune and these inflammatory reactions and that tends to be mediated through nuclear factor kappa beta. So it's a little bit of a, you know, insight there. And then the last big piece that I'm looking for symptomatically, I'm looking for on testing and I'm looking for with improvements with treatments <laughs> is high oxidative stress symptoms. So that can be a little bit of a mixed bag. Um, but if you're thinking about high oxidative stress, you're thinking again, you're depleting all your endogenous antioxidants, you're depleting your ability to um, you know, resolve those little spot fires around the body. And on a note test, I would be looking for uh, either a deficiency in glutathione or an increased need for glutathione. And those are two really interesting markers that you can find on uh, you know, my preference, the Mosaic Labs out test. So there's definitely more to the story there, but I thought we'd just start with those four big pieces showing you how a fungal overgrowth like candida or green mold growing in the gut, maybe geotrichum, maybe rhodotorola, you know, fungal overgrowth as an umbrella can lead to more than just digestive symptoms, all the classic, you know, obvious symptoms of the gut these more systemic symptoms. I mean, one thing we didn't talk about there at all, and it's not so much, you know, metabolite mediated, so it doesn't fit, but we have talked about it, or we will talk about it, <laughs> is, um, you know, mast cell mediated um, conditions as a consequence of a fungal overgrowth, something like candida, something like aspergillus, they are all major, major triggers for mast cells to degranulate and trigger that allergic histamine uh, reactive presentation. So hopefully you got something out of that. If you did, remember to like, comment, and subscribe. That really helps me. And if you are in Australia or New Zealand and think you could benefit, then there's a booking link below. And if you are somewhere else in the world, then we are working really hard at putting together a catalog of courses. We're gonna do something on fungal overgrowth, like simple treatments, frontline therapies. We're gonna do some histamine intolerance courses. Really gives me a chance to go a lot deeper down and also share some of these easy to find and common remedies that I get really good results with in the clinic. Stay tuned for that. We'll do a big announcement and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Awesome. Catch ya.